Hari Gopinath Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram. Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Gora Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hare Nam Sankirtana Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnavarinda Ki Jai Gaura Premanande So, welcome to part three of Yoga, the art of play. Thank you all for coming. You who are here presently are the hardcore. <laughs> um, now, we've been doing a lot of talking and, and uh, certain amount of theorizing and a bit of playing. And I think today I want to get us also doing a bit of writing. Writing. And for this, some of you may have notebooks or such, and some of you may not. And those of you who do not, uh, we have a solution, but only now I'm remembering. We, we had a whole ream of paper and we had stacks of pens. I think he's going to, someone just ran out like he knows, oh, maybe not. We have it all there? Okay. 
now we have we have some devotees on a mission to find paper so that's good um, who, how, how many of you were here on Tuesday okay good and those of you who were not here on Tuesday confession no that's <laughs> Uh, it's quite okay we're all pacing ourselves <laughs> and we have to do it in various ways can some of you help me remember what we talked about on Tuesday I know Tuesday was a long time ago it was the day before yesterday uh, huh? Writing a drama, yes, we talked about that. Anything else? Yes, uh, Rama Priya. Right, we that was that was okay. That was a kind of uh, icebreaker which was a bit of an extended icebreaker, where we, we uh, revisited our first, possibly first meeting with uh, Hare Krishna devotees. And then we took it to the next step of considering how we might represent that story um, as a some sort of performance, right? Yes. Anything else that we? What else did we do? I know it was a long time ago. Yes. Summarize, uh, some of the deri summarize derivations of the words, uh, reenactment. Oh yes. Ah, uh, you've story. made notes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> did you talk about changing the costumes uh, to those <laughs> involved in the play? Change of costumes. Changing change costumes. Of costumes. Did we talk about changing costumes? I don't remember that. Maybe we did. Okay. Yes, reenactment, uh, enacting. We had an example of this, um, or a couple of examples. Uh, anyone remember what our examples were? Yes. Um, was one of them a um, like an art guide? So going to a painting of Krishna and then telling people about it. Uh, well, Invoking. that that okay. That was uh, not. Oh. That was another example, <laughs> an example for something else, but uh, reenactment and. Um, well, we were also using the word re-creation. Yes. Yes, the Ramlila movie, and also the Ramayana um, in Ram Nagar. Yes, but yes, Ram's um, Ramanan Sagars. Yes, we talked about that also. The idea being, there's um, something which we understand has occurred in ancient or we may want to say super ancient times and then this is um, this is described in most famously the Valmiki Ramayana uh, which is then rendered actually there's many many renderings of the Ramayana uh, most famous in North India is uh, the Tulsi Das Ram Charitamanas, which is a highly, you can say, it's been highly injected uh, in, in a much more explicit way than Valmiki Rama with bhakti. Lots and lots and lots of bhakti. Also in the south, what do we have in the south? Uh, the famous uh, Ramayana of the south. Kamban, Kamban Ramayan, yes. <clears throat> Which also, I understand, is uh, enriched with so much bhakti. So, many r sort of renderings or retellings of the, of the story 
uh, elaborations on the story, adaptations, actually all over Southeast Asia, uh, there are uh, traditions of Ramayana. That's a whole nother story, uh, another topic. But um, mm, the point was simply that you can watch a performance of the Ramayana. You already know the story and still you want to see again. And it's like, a, it's, like it's happening again. I got a hint from Gorilla. It sounded like he's saying they're working on some some sort of Rama Leela. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's very conducive to performance. So on that note, again, as a bit of an icebreaker, and here you can just pair up with whoever is uh, you like, uh, just briefly. I was thinking this morning about Hanuman burning Lanka. We all know, does everyone knows the story basically, yes? Uh, what, what happens? Hanuman allows himself to be caught uh, in the Ashok garden after he has spoken with uh, Sita Devi. He allows himself to be caught. He's brought into the court before Ravana, who initially wants to kill uh, Hanuman, but he's reminded that it's not, it's not dharmic <laughs> to kill a messenger. <laughs> and so he restrains himself, we can say, but uh, he feels that uh, he... Hanuman needs some, some sort of punishment, and so he tells his servants to alight his tail. And they, they pour some oil on his tail and light it on fire. And then, what does Hanuman do? He says, oh, great, thank you very much. <laughs> This is a great opportunity to do what I've always wanted to do. <laughs> he doesn't say that. And then he, then he dances and prances and jumps all over Lanka and incinerates the entire, the entire Ire, uh, island. Ireland? No, island. Um, now, just for fun, let's see if we can come up with some, an idea or two ideas between you of how you might stage this. Now, here's my thought behind this. Um, one of the things about drama that makes it so powerful is it ignites <laughs> our imagination because so much of what goes on on the stage is, impl is implying things, which then the audience, in a sense, project uh, or in some way imagine to fill out, to fill the gaps, if you like, um, between the reality presented on stage and the way we understand things. So, um, so my, my thought is, can, can we think of ways that such a scene might be portrayed on a stage, just this one scene, in such a way as to ignite the imagination of the audience? Now you're all looking at me like, huh, what is it you want us to do? <laughs> I'm trying to get your imaginative juices going, you know, this expression. <laughs> so maybe if you talk about it with each other, something will come out. Let's just do for a few minutes, okay? You can, in twos or threes or tens, however many together you like to be, can you think about this and see what comes out? Yes?
Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. Yes, thank you.
such animated discussions. Now I'm really curious what you've come up with. <clears throat> okay, anyone want to kick things off, as we say in English? Yes, okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So it would be a joint presentation uh, with all of us uh, saying something, but then, um, so th the scene starts with uh, Hanuman slapping Lankini because he's entering into Lanka and he just slaps uh, Lankini and she runs out shouting, oh my God, now Han uh, Lanka is going to definitely fall apart. And the next thing Hanuman does is he just, um, puts his hand over his stomach and he says, oh, I'm hungry. But then I have, <laughs> and then I have a job to do, but let's, let's find Sita. So he goes looking for Sita, but then he's also tempted by the fruits and then he sees there is this tree and he climbs up thinking maybe he finds food there. But then he says, he sees down there that there is uh, Mother Sita, a very beautiful lady. Uh -huh. And he, then he jumps and he goes to Mother Sita and then they have the whole conversation of who he is and he's a messenger of Lord Ram, etc. But then she gets intimidated when he comes too close and then he presents the ring uh, say, uh, as a signification of the fact that he's truly the servant of Lord Ram. And after that conversation, he says, uh, so it's a little humorous, our presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After the conversation, he says, um, uh, but uh, Mata, I am really hungry. After <laughs> and he t tells her the whole story of how he crossed the ocean and then he also wrestled with Lankini, etc. And then Mother Sita says, yeah, you look at all these fruits and flowers, they're all for you. And then Hanuman is so happy, he says, thanks mom. And then <laughs> he just runs out to explore the garden, eat all the fruits and everything. And then at that time, one of the guards of uh, Ravana catches him by the tail. Uh. And then Hanuman cannot move and he turns and he sees that there, there is this guard and then more people come and they uh, arrest Hanuman and bring him in front of Ravana. And the scene opens like this, that Ravana is in his palace nicely curling his mustache. Mm -hmm. And then Hanuman is brought before uh, Ravana and um, then Ravana is like, oh, this is a weird creature. And then he says, you weird, who are you? And then uh, Hanuman says, I am Hanuman, the servant of La Lord Ram. And then Ravana says, Hanu who? Hanu who? <laughs> Hanu who? <laughs> <laughs> and then they have the whole conversation where he insults Ravana and glorifies Lord Ram. And then um, Ravana is angry, but he's also just like, he's just a monkey. And then he says, you talk too much, let's kill him. And then he, he takes this decision and his guards come to attack Hanuman. At that time, Vibhishana interrupts and he gives the whole law book of an experience and says that you cannot. Mm -hmm. And then they have a debate, Ravana and Vibhishana, and eventually Ravana says, okay, I don't kill him directly, I just kill him in indirectly. So we burn his, he sa we set his tail on fire. It's a great insult to a monkey. Mm -hmm. They set his tail on fire and then Hanuman starts looking at his uh, tail and he starts laughing vehemently. And then Ravana said, I knew you were weird. And <laughs> then after that, Hanuman says, let me show you. And then he takes his tail and he goes from every, he starts laughing even more louder and he um, climbs every building top and sets the whole lanka on fire. So <laughs> <laughs> That expanded into the whole story of <laughs> Hanuman's uh, visit to to Lanka. Nice. Okay. <laughs> you said it would involve all four of you. Yeah, it would have. But she is really talkative. <laughs> ah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Who else wants to share something? Yes, back here. Hare Krishna. Uh, the, um, 
point is that uh, everybody should be absorbed in uh, Ramayana. Um, the persons who playing, uh, they are uh, do it very. If you can hold the microphone a little closer, uh -huh. uh, yes. The persons who play it uh, um, on the scene, they are do they doing this <coughs> excellently. <laughs> Hard to translate. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, for everybody who is in the um, in the room who's who's seeing this uh, uh, drama. The audience, yes. Yeah, the audience. Uh, the, uh, they have um, the list of uh, words. Список слов. And everybody's uh, um, words for everybody who's who playing. Uh, they have this. Uh, they have the script. Yes, yes. Uh. Uh, mm, so when Hanuman uh, is speaking, then somebody from the audience uh, reading his words, but he is quiet on the scene. He's reading the words, I, but I, yeah, the, from from the audience, somebody yeah. uh, reading words uh -huh. of this person who playing. Okay, he just playing and. Uh, uh, and it's like uh, phonogram, uh, like uh, the back uh, back um, voice from and nobody's. Uh, hear this person who reading but uh, audi audience uh, think that it's wor it words of this person on the stage uh -huh. and and then uh, the person who read the words changes every time hmm. and, and uh, everybody goes like this uh, um, speaking for some someone who on the stage and they absorbing in this uh, Ramayana drama like this um, th that is all oh okay <laughs> thank you that's interesting idea uh, <laughs> I'm I would have to think some more about how that would exactly work but I think your idea is interesting because it's involving uh, all of the audience in, in, in a sense, directly in the performance, and that's 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 a very postmodern idea. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mangalaj, under the microphone here. Switch, switch. There's a, on the side a switch. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we were focusing mainly on the actual scene of Hanuman having already the tail on fire and thinking of what he should do now. <laughs> so the narrator would be the one uh, expressing his inner thoughts of, mm. of <laughs> creative thoughts of what he can do now. Mm. And uh, uh, of course, with every good drama, you have to have very good music. So we would have very dramatic music playing in the background. And um, yeah, I forgot to say that we know who narrator would be, Madhava's dad. Oh. <laughs> he assigned <laughs> all the roles already. Yeah. And you would do the Ravana, yeah? And um, so the Hanuman would be dressed up as a warrior and he would have this fire, if you know this performance with fire. Oh. So this would be like the fire juggler uh, uh -huh. who would 
juggle the fire around the stage and dance as he goes. Okay. And the rest of us would be lighting like fire candles. Um, and of course, there would be percussions, heavy percussions playing as this dramatic scene is evolving. And um, I think there would be a lot of inner dialogue of Hanuman as well with narrator expressing what he's going through. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's so. very nice. Thank you. <laughs> so what would be some of the thoughts of Hanuman? I'm, I'm, what would be some of the thoughts of Hanuman? You said the narrator would be um, portraying these thoughts. So I think initially we'd start with him uh, having some anxiety over being caught, but then seeing it as an opportunity, and then when they mentioned that they might kill him, the inner conflict and the narrator sort of going and telling the audience that, oh gosh, I don't want to die, I, I need to do more to save Sita Devi, etc. And then when finally they do set his tail alight, they, he then uh, gets very excited, and you see all his excitement come out in his thoughts. This is my chance, this is my moment, let me seize it. I think Madhva was going to play the Hanuman, who was going to dance around and set everything on fire. We could see all the excitement, and he would be, and over to this one, and onto this one, and next, where should I go? And all the thoughts coming <laughs> out. <laughs> so Madhva is all ready to play the part of Hanuman. He's assigned all the roles already. He's assigned all the roles. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Who else? Who else? Yes. So Prabhuji here had a brilliant idea that we focused on um, Hanuman getting caught and with his intellect, him sort of planning to get caught. So perhaps there's a narrator, yeah, sorry, perhaps there's close. a narrator saying Hanuman's, you know, a genius and he's planned to get caught. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as part of the punishment, uh, Hanuman has sort of figured out that they're going to set his tail on fire. We're not sure how yet, we haven't worked that bit out. And uh, once they start to try and set his, fire, um, his tail on fire, they can't really set it on fire. For some reason, it doesn't burn. There's not enough, um, <laughs> you know, like a, like, a wick, uh -huh. like a wick on a lamp. There's nothing right. enough to, to catch fire. To. <laughs> so then Hanuman actually gives him an idea. He laughs like a crazy monkey. And he says, no, you fools, you need, you need some cotton to wrap it. Get some <laughs> cotton, buy some cotton, wrap it around my tail. <laughs> so... <laughs> So there's a big hunt on First spikes. take some cotton and then get some oil and pour it in the <laughs> cotton. Then, <laughs> so then, the, then the guards sort of start laughing at him like he really is a crazy person. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a whole hunt on to find enough cotton. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hanuman says, no, the tail's not long enough. You know? And um, so they keep finding more and more cotton. Eventually he realizes, okay, my tail's long enough now to, to whip around and, and start a fire. But one of the guards pauses and thinks, well, why, why does he have such a long tail? You know? And Hanuman uses his brain again and says, well, actually, I don't want my bottom to catch on fire so that by the tail being quite long, it will take a long time before the fire reaches me. So he's trying to put off the inevi inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And then he escapes and uh, he finds some areas where there's sort of inflammable... Um, devices like mm. that kegs of, 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 of whiskey or whatever they used to drink, the armies <laughs> would drink on, you know, he finds uh, lamps and he jumps from building to building and uses his tail like a, like a lasso kind of thing and, and sort of, you know, just causes mayhem. And it sounds like, it sounds like for this it would have to be done uh, with film <laughs> instead <laughs> of on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> But that's okay. Good. Thank you. That sounds interesting. Yeah, I, I would have never thought of that. Hanuman is helping them to understand how to light his, <laughs> his tail. That's good. That's, that's interesting. Thank you. <laughs> um, others? We have a group back here. And... Hare Krishna. Uh, 
uh, we use, we are Balinese, so we would like to present in our Balinese way of uh, Ramayan. Ramayan, and uh, as, uh, in the part of usually we express it in uh, dancing. Ah yes. Dance performance. Yes. And uh, the scene start from I mean uh, the the scene of this Hanuman Buddha it start from uh, the uh, many maid servant of uh, Ravan mm -hmm. there uh, together there in the Asokawan and their sit Sita Devi uh, uh, said and from background which uh, uh, from the background of the tree there look like a Hanuman looking oh maybe that's sit, uh, mother Sita and after all the major fun gone then he came to mother Sita he come to mother Sita and he uh, present himself as a, a messenger from uh, Ram and showing the not, not yet, but Sita doesn't. But, but Sita not yet uh, convinced. So he saw the ring from given from Ram, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, Sita Devi uh, convinced, and then uh, he speak to uh, Hanuman uh, that please uh, tell Ram to come. Then I'm still okay and like that and this is the proof and he give one of, of his uh, jewelry uh, of her jewelry to Hanuman and uh, af after that exchange uh, the there he jump out and there he caught by the uh, by the guard of that Asokawan and brought about brought in front of uh, Ravan. Uh, at that moment, he he he's, he be, because while doing that, he's like looking around to the city, what is going on, and that is this like strategically, and then in front of uh, Ravan, uh, he he he. Uh, Ravan told the guard to uh, burn the. Uh, he thought that uh, uh, Ravana. And to teach uh, Hanuman a lesson, Rawan asked the guard to burn Hanuman tail. And after that uh, tail burn, he is like jumping around and with, uh, with excitedly, and they are a little bit like uh, comical dancing in that comical part, like uh, mm. summer. Some are <laughs> and some are running on the fire or something like that, like mm. uh, because there we, we use like li little bit uh, r real fire also oh. and the music. <laughs> You'd have real fire on stage. <laughs> yes. That'll be exciting, yeah. <laughs> especially if it burns down the theater. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's this real uh, um, fire. Yeah, they then, do uh, in yeah, Bali. Yeah, they do in Bali. Uh -huh. And then the Kechak dance. The music, uh -huh. they are uh, performed by the sound of the uh, people. Uh -huh. Like, uh, yeah. Like, chak 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 like that. Oh, and the, then the, the uh, audience. The, the yes. Audience. It, not, not, not the, the audience, audience. Uh, oh. the the performance. the performance. Some musicians, yeah. music from the mouth like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. very interesting. Thank very you. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. This uh, mentioning of dance reminds me. I've heard about this. I haven't seen it, but um, one of the dance uh, performance styles in Kerala. I believe it's called Katiyatam. And I have read about a performance uh, which was uh, telling the story of creation of the universe through dance 
and this, how long did this dance go? It went for, I think it was 32 hours. Yeah. <laughs> so how does that work? Well, that's one way of, we, we generally think of a performance of a stage, okay, maybe it goes for an hour, maybe two hours. Uh, there was a Mahabharata performance uh, done uh, by, um, uh, what's his name, Peter Berg, Berg Berger, Berg, no. Um, perf he, he created a Mahabharata, it was performed in Paris with an international uh, uh, performers and um, the performance went for nine hours. The same was then translated, so to say, into film, and you can find that film. It's uh, it's about five and a half hours. Um, yeah, I I really, I personally very much like that. Some devotees don't like it at all because uh, Krishna is portrayed as a kind of, you know, 55-year-old person and he speaks with a s slight, not Italian accent, I forget what his accent is, but <laughs> Arjuna definitely has an Italian accent. <laughs> and um, and B Bhishma is, uh, I believe he's from Ethiopia and he's these... He's this little thin, little short, thin guy. <laughs> uh, but other than that, it's it's quite quite well done. Anyway, dance. Yes, lots can be done with dance. Um, briefly, if you wanted to, yes, just you wanted to add a little something. So I want to go. <laughs> Mike. Uh, no. Mike. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was pointing back here, but no, you please speak. Okay. Go ahead. Um, my group was also thinking how to put the stage on fire, and then we came. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know the technical term, but we thought of doing with shadows, having a screen, uh -huh. and in background having objects, and then with shadowing, um, showing mm. the seen with, with blocks and so the buildings and setting in fire and so. Okay, yeah. Yeah, different kinds of technology might be used to give the impression, give the sense of fire, of course. But also sound and also drums, as you mentioned, and yeah, so many things. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Encourage everyone. Okay, one, one again, adding something. Maybe you can just summarize without having to go back and forth. The, the case is for, for uh, absorbing um, the audience to the uh, drama. Uh, there is no uh, boards between between um, the ac actors and the, the audience. They they're running uh, through audience. Th this uh, uh, actors who uh -huh. who playing drama. Hanuman can ask someone in the Hanuman can ask someone in the audience, uh, where is the Sita? Where is Sita? It is. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> yes. Hare Krishna, thank you. <laughs> very, very nice, very nice idea. Yes, again, involving, involving the audience, asking the audience, where is Sita? I think that makes a very nice seg into what I want to do now, if we can turn this on. Let us now um, go to Vrindavan and let us go to where 
the gopis have met with Krishna only to have the heartbreaking experience that Krishna disappears and then <clears throat> seeking him in the forest they speak with the various denizens of the forest asking them where is Krishna, where is Krishna and at one point they say let us ask these creepers about Krishna even though they are embracing the arms of their husbands, this tree, they certainly must have been touched by Krishna's fingernails, since out of joy they are manifesting eruptions on their skin. <laughs> so this is some, um, it's a kind of uh, footnote here that uh, the gopis are using their reasoning to understand where Krishna must be. So here they apply a bit of, a bit of, um, how to say, a bit of anuman, some reasoning uh, that certainly they must have been touched by Krishna's fingernails. Why? Because this must be a cause of an effect which we now see. What is that? since out of joy they are manifesting eruptions on their skin. <laughs> right? Anyway, but that's kind of uh, peripheral to what we want to look at. The next verse. Having spoken these words, the gopis, distraught from searching for Krishna, began to act out his various pastimes, fully absorbed in thoughts of him. One gopi imitated Putana, while another acted like infant Krishna and pretended to suck her breast. Another gopi, crying in imitation of infant Krishna, kicked a gopi who was taking the role of the cart demon Shakadasura. One gopi took the role of Trinavarta and carried away another who was acting like infant Krishna, while yet another gopi crawled about her ankle bells tinkling as she pulled her feet. And like this, uh, we, we get several verses describing how the gopis are imitating Krishna, uh, reenacting the pastimes of Krishna, uh, and at one point, this is verse 19, another gopi, her mind fixed on Krishna, walked about with her arm resting on the shoulder of a friend and declared, I am Krishna. Just see how gracefully I move. So imitating Krishna uh, is performed this is a kind of performance. In this case, who are the gopis performing for? They're performing for each other. And why are they performing? Okay, to, we can say to relieve uh, their pain of separation. Uh, anything else you could think of might be a reason or part of the logic of their performing. Yes. Yes, they're being with Krishna again. They're invoking Krishna. Krishna is becoming present through their reenactment of Krishna's pastimes. And then this becomes sort of explicit, you can say, in verse 19, <laughs> when one of the gopis sort of uh, prances, uh, sort of struts about, we can say, 
and says, I am Krishna, just see how gracefully I move. <laughs> so that's kind of fun, isn't it? Um, this is, uh, this is we, we, I like to think of this as the primordial scene of acting. The primordial situation of acting for the devotee is the feeling of Krishna's absence. Where is Krishna? In that feeling uh, and searching, um, the devotees invoke Krishna and make Krishna present. Maybe just a couple more. No, that's, yeah, one more verse. Don't be afraid of the wind and rain, said one gopi. I will save you. And with that, she lifted her shawl above her head. So this would be an interesting scene that one could reenact uh, the gopis. Okay, we can turn. Oh, wait, don't turn it off. Uh, let's see if I can. Shift this now. Oops, that's my notes. Here, okay. All right, time goes so quickly. Well, I warned you on the first day <laughs> that I started um, playing around with some ideas uh, for a, uh, a drama. Uh, involving Hiranyakashipu. Now, little history to this. Uh, it was Nursinga Chaturdasi 2019, I believe, in Singachalam. And uh, it was morning uh, program and um, Parividha Prabhu had had assigned uh, parts to each of us. We read through the story, uh, basically the Bhagavatam. And then uh, we were, I think about five of us, um, devotees were asked to briefly speak on, um, on the occasion, the subject of um, the appearance of Lord Nrsingadev. And somehow it happened, I was I was the first, I was at one end <laughs> of the lineup, so I was asked to speak first. And I spoke something about Hiranyakashipu, in a sense, suggesting that maybe we should not think of him as being entirely evil. Well, um, His, His Holiness Kandama Kanana Swami did not like that idea at all. When it was his turn to speak, he said, Hiranya Kashipu was completely evil through and through. He was a demon. There's no question about it. Well, it, it sort of, were you there? We, we, anyone was there? No. Um, it sort of turned into a spontaneous debate. <laughs> and we were kind of going back and forth like lawyers for and against Hirani Kashipu. And this, this got me thinking that this could possibly be um, developed. But I haven't developed it very far. And I thought I'll just share with you what I did uh, sort of jot down at one time. And uh, let's see if this sparks your thinking, if I may. Can I sort of share this with you? It's, it's, um, it's just to get you thinking about this. So Hiranyakashipu, um, he's basically, he's been killed, okay? <laughs> The, the drama is over. Whenever we perform the singa leela in the temples, there's always at the end, the grand finale, right, is that uh, Nrsingadev comes out roaring and he's, he's uh, yeah, he's roaring. Um, but now that's all over and Hiranyakashipu has been killed. But 
Now is his after that time, his afterlife. And he's feeling some sort of love-hate relationship with the person, whoever that was, who killed him. He was like some sort of monster. And yet, there was a strangely unfathomable softness in his glance. Even as his nails, I should say his claws, dug into my gut there was simultaneously excruciating pain and exquisite peace. No, I'm not a masochist. It was inconceivable. I must meet him again. Somehow I must meet him again. Narada is sitting perhaps in a chair, perhaps sort of plucking on a guitar. And he says, I'm sure you will meet him again, but I cannot say how it will happen. Indeed, I wonder myself how it will happen. Well, if I can be of any help. When you saw him, what did he look like? Hiranyakashipu is pacing back and forth, and he says, like? Like no one I've ever seen, yet somehow familiar. Actually, I'm not sure I saw him. One moment he was here, the next moment not here, but over there. Then, completely invisible. And how he roared. The sound came simultaneously from everywhere. And then as if hearing him again, Hiranyakashipu suddenly starts and he looks off in the distance and Narada says, they say that the Supreme Person is, is everywhere. So it makes sense. They also say that he is equal to everyone. So it stands to reason that he would be located equally everywhere. Hiranyakashipu, but if he is equal to all, why he killed me? And Narada is laughing and he says, don't you see, he didn't really kill you. Otherwise, how is it that you are here now talking, walking, you look to be in full health, sir. Hiranyakashipu is confused. <clears throat> now that you mention it, you did say something about food, didn't you? I'm starved. Got anything to eat? And there's, uh, uh, that's Hiranyakashipu. Narada says, hmm. Let me have a look. And he looks in his shoulder bag and says, why, yes, here's some coconut pieces. This should hold you over um, long enough. Hiranyakashipu takes the coconut and he's sitting next to Narada and he says, long enough? What do you mean, long enough? Oh, nothing. Well, you'll see in due course. Besides, subtle bodies don't really need to eat. Subtle bodies? What are you talking about? <clears throat> now Narada stands up and he begins pacing and he says, oh, nothing really, I'll, I'll explain, but first, do help yourself. And he gestures to the coconut. And Hiranyakashipu says, I can't get him out of my mind. Actually, this was always the problem, to the point that I felt tortured from within. And Prahlad, of course, he was right all along. But he really didn't help matters by his constant praise of Vishnu. 
and how he would talk to me as if he was the father and I was the son, or like he was the teacher and I the student. And Narada says, what Prahlad said to you, don't you agree it was actually good advice? Do you remember what he said? Hiranyakashipu, hmm, and then he laughs and he says, he advised me to go to the forest. And that's as far as I got. So now, your task, your mission, if you should accept it, is to help me continue from there. You're all looking at me like, uh, what? <laughs> Where do we want this to go? Well, as I said, uh, it seems to me, well, there's a couple of things I marked here. One is somehow I must meet him again. And the other, I can't get him out of my mind. So this may help you to think, what sort of mood, feel do we want? But also the question in my mind is, how do we get, how do we get, how does Hiranyakashipu become Ravana? It seems to me that something needs to transition him from being Hiranyakashipu, who's, who's um, what was Hiranyakashipu's problem? Lust, anger, greed, what, what can we say was his main problem? One okay. of the worst things, uh, that, that he wants to kill his own son. Um, okay. Yes. And he himself wanted to be the supreme uh, entity. He wants he, to he be could the, not tolerate that the master of all. Okay. Yeah. Yes. If we just look at lust, anger, pride, greed amongst these qualities, I feel for Hiranyakashipu, uh, anger and pride were what really brought him down. Anger and pride, okay, yes. And, um, yes. Uh, Hare Krishna, I would say uh -huh. envy is the most problem of Hiranyakashipu. Envy uh -huh. that he is not Im immortal, uh -huh. that he is not the highest. Ah, uh -huh. okay. That could be also perhaps something of all of these points. What would you say is the problem of Ravana? Immediately, everyone says lust. <laughs> okay. So, how would we go now from Hiranyakashipu's problems to Ravana's problems? Or do we want to say they're actually all the same in different degrees? Um, but how do we get Hiranyakashipu prepared to appear as Ravana? That's, I think, one question that you could address. Does that make any sense? Now, another possibility, and I sort of mentioned this in my little debate uh, with Kadamba Kanana Maharaj, it, was, it, was, it became something like a courtroom uh, drama, and I was thinking perhaps of involving uh, Yamaraj, um, but there could also be, one could make it quite complex. Uh, one could have a jury, um, and of course we would need a defense lawyer, or perhaps the defense lawyer would be Prahlad. <laughs> Uh, I'm just putting some ideas out there, but now you have some paper and you have some pens and what I would like is that you start sketching ideas and I hope you'll write clearly enough 
so that uh, it'll be possible to read. And eventually, I would like to uh, receive your notes, and they may help me to work on this drama. So I'm asking you to please help me uh, to develop this drama. Is that all right? Yeah, I, I, you didn't sign up for this, did you? But uh, I did sort of warn you on the first day. <laughs> so we have um, not a whole lot of time. We have a little over 15 minutes. So maybe you can just um, sketch, do some brainstorming first. You know it is a brainstorm? Technically, brainstorming means you have an idea and you simply note it without judging it. And one way to do this, uh, it's done in impromptu th uh, theater. Uh, impromptu, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, is one person says something and the other person says, yes, and, so you always go with yes, and. You can add to that, um, you can say, Yes, I, I'm improvisational theater, that's the word I wanted. You can say yes, and that means dot, dot, dot. Or you can leave it more open, yes, and, and then you just bring in a new idea and a new idea, and in this way. Does that make any sense at all? Yes, no, maybe, kind of, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Someone wrote uh, a script of this One of our previous acharyas that I really like to meet. my thought is um, there's, there's a, there's a, I, I was a transition. transition. Okay.
Yes, that would also kind of make the whole thing more uh, sort of bona fide <laughs> instead of my, just my speculation. I would think that Hari, Hari Parsha is a work for a lot of people. He's a walking
If I may interrupt briefly, <laughs> just to say, I'm, I'm already encouraged to see that ideas are coming. I see some of you are really going for it. And uh, so I would like to encourage you to keep thinking about this over the next few hours. And please, <laughs> And please come back tomorrow <laughs> for our session because, uh, as I said, I'm asking for your help. Um, and if you have any further ideas, please note them and uh, let's continue. Okay? Is this, what do you think? Is this a good thing, what we're doing? Yes? No? Good. So, yeah, it's still, it's not, it's a little bit out of our comfort zone, isn't it? Um, that's good. <laughs> okay. Um, I have an appointment at one o'clock, so I'm sort of keeping to the time. If whoever of you, single or in a group, you want to continue talking with each other, that's fine. But I'm going to sort of wrap up and make a move. So I'm going to say thank you all so much, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Ananta Khoti Vaishnava Vrinda ki jai, Gaur Premanande. Yeah.